All right, so in this video here, we're going to be talking about arithmetic sequences, and then we're going to move into uh, geometric sequences for the next video. So an arithmetic sequence has the form where the first term is going to be the letter A, and then you have A plus D, A plus 2D, A plus 3D, A plus 4D, and so forth. And the D is what we call the common difference, okay? So the easiest way to kind of explain this here is by using the formula that we have below. So we do have a formula that will generate an arithmetic sequence for us. So let's go ahead and let's just generate some terms. So let's find the uh, first four terms of an arithmetic se sequence. So arithmetic sequence. All right, if A equals nine, D equals four, okay? So let's go ahead, let's look at this. So we're gonna use our formula, A sub N equals the first term plus N minus one times the common difference, which is gonna be uh, D. So for us, <coughs> excuse me, a1 is going to equal our first term, so that's going to be 9, plus 1 minus 1 times 4, which we know A1 is equal to 9. Now, I'll just draw a line. We're going to do A2. So A2 is going to equal A1, which is going to be 9, plus 2 minus 1 times 4. So A2 is going to be 9 plus 1 times 4, which is 13, okay? Now, if we just keep doing this, A3 will equal A1 plus 3 minus 1 times 4. Well, we know A1 is 9, so this is going to be A3 equals 9 plus 2 times 4. 2 times 4 is 8. So A3 is going to be 9 plus 8, which is 17. <clears throat> and then the fourth one here is going to be 9 plus. Hopefully you can follow the pattern right now. So A4 is going to be 9 plus. Uh, 4 minus 1 is 3. So this is going to be 9 plus 12, which is 21. Okay? Now, what makes what we just have an arithmetic sequence. Like in other words, if I just gave you the numbers 9, 13, 17, and 21, and I said, tell me what kind of sequence this is, or <clears throat> find the nth term for this, what you would notice here is that there is a common difference between 9 and 13. Now think about what I'm saying, common difference. So if I were to take 13 minus 9, Notice I get 4. If I were to take 17 minus 13, notice I get 4 again. If I were to take 21 minus 17, notice I get 4 again. So sometimes when you have a sequence of numbers, and like in the previous section, let me go back to the previous section here. Okay. <clears throat> we'll scroll all the way up. So like here, we found that these were even numbers, two, four, six. Then uh, with this one, we had, you know, alternating signs, but it was one over N. Even here, one, three, five, seven, nine, those are, those are odd numbers. Well, sometimes you run into a situation where you have a sequence of numbers, but there is no readily uh, pattern that you can see very quickly. So when that happens, maybe look at the terms and say, okay, is there a common difference? Because if there's a common difference, we call this an arithmetic sequence. Okay, we call that an arithmetic sequence. And once you establish that you have an arithmetic sequence, I can say, okay, what is the 10th term in 
our sequence. So once you established that it was arithmetic, you can say, well, a10 is going to equal our first term, which is 9, times 10 minus 1 times 4. So a10 is going to equal 9 plus 9 times 4. a10 is going to equal 9 plus 9 times 4 is 36, which means a10 is going to equal 45. Okay? So for this next example here, we're going to keep it very similar to the previous, okay? The directions are going to be a little bit different. So we're going to determine the common difference. and write the arithmetic sequence. And then finally, find a 100, okay? And here's our sequence right here. So we have four, 10, 16, 22, and so forth. So since I'm telling you to find a common difference in the directions and I'm telling you this in arithmetic sequence, this is going to be really simple for us. All we have to do is just look at two numbers. 10 minus 4 is 6. And check it. Make sure it works. 16 minus 10, well, that's going to be 6. 22 minus 16, that equals 6 as well. So we know our common difference here. is equal to 6. We also know that the formula for an arithmetic sequence is going to be a n equals a, and sometimes in some books it'll say a sub 0, which is the first term. It's always going to be the first term, times n minus 1 times d. So a n is going to equal 4 plus n minus 1 times 6. Okay? Now, since we know what an arithmetic sequence looks like, we can find a of 100, which is going to equal 4, plus 100 minus 1 times 6. So this is going to be a 100 equals 4 plus 99 times 6, which is, if I'm correct, I think it's 598. So 598. Now, there is one extremely famous uh, story, and it deals with partial sums of arithmetic sequences. So let me just write this out. All right, now here's the story. Most mathematicians would consider Sir Frederick Gauss. So I'm just going to put F. Gauss as the uh, father of mathematics, okay, right? Now, the legend goes that uh, Gauss was um, in like third grade or something like that, like second or third grade, maybe fourth grade. He was, he, he was elementary school. That's really what we need to start with, elementary school. And they were learning about adding things. So one day the teacher came in and the teacher said, please go ahead and add all these numbers all the way up to 100 and tell me what it equals okay so most students would just sit there and go okay well 1 plus 2 is 3 3 plus 3 is 6 6 plus 4 is 10 10 plus 5 is 15 and they would just keep doing this and 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 you're trying to get this sum here but that's not what gauss did what gauss did was this all right remind you elementary school, we're talking, you know, 10 years old. Gauss looked at this problem and said, well, 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way to 100 has to equal some number, okay? So I'm going to use the word sum as the addition of numbers, all right? And here's what Gauss noticed. Gauss noticed that, and I'm going to kind of write this out a little bit more so you can see what's happening here. 
right? Now remind you, I'm gonna say this probably two more times, elementary school. Here's what Gauss noticed. <clears throat> if you take one plus 100, in fact, let me give myself some more space. If you take one plus 100, it equals 101. If you take two plus 99, that equals 101. If you take three plus 98, that also equals 101. So what Gauss noticed just by finding this little pattern was that anytime you start on the outside and you work your way in with the pairs of numbers, it always totals the same exact value. In this case, between one and 100, it's 101. So then Gauss thought to himself, well, how many pairs of numbers are there between one and 100? And there's 50 pairs of numbers. So what Gauss did, it just took 101 times 50 and arrived at the answer of 5,050 and walked up to the teacher and said, here you go. And he did this in about five minutes. It was fascinating. In fact, the teacher was so blown away at this that the teacher said, well, good job, Fred, but how do you know this is correct? So, Gauss went back down to his seat, thought about the problem a little bit more, and then did this. He said, well, teacher, if you want me to add up all these numbers, all right? And this is fascinating what he did right here. See, he knew if you wanted to stop at 100, then the previous number is going to be 100 minus 1, which is 99. And then the previous number uh, based off that would be 100 minus 2, which is 98. So what Gal said is, well, I'm going to stop at any number you want me to stop at. We're going to call it the letter N. And then he wrote this backwards. Watch. N plus N minus 1 plus n minus two, and you will continuously do this until you get down to three plus two plus one. And watch what happens when I add these two lines together. I'm gonna go from left to right. I'm gonna put the variables first. For the first, you get n plus one, okay? Plus, now I'll write the, I'll write the math out down below, but you'll see what's gonna happen here. Two plus n minus one, which is n plus 1 again. I'll do the next one. It's going to be 3 plus n minus 2, which is still n plus 1. And if you continuously do this, you're going to notice that you get n plus 1 for the entire addition of these two equations. And this is going to equal two times the sum because you have two sums. So sum plus a sum is two sums. So then he said, well, I have an equation here and I can solve for the sum. So how he did this was he thought about well, what's happening on the left-hand side. Well, you're going to have n numbers of n plus ones. In other words, however, however many you want me to go out, I'm going to have n of those objects. So n times n plus 1 is on the left-hand side, equals 2 times the sum. And finally, if I just divide both sides by 2, we come up with n times the quantity n plus 1 divided by 2 is going to equal whatever sum you want me to find. So, let n equal 100 which was the original problem that the teacher wanted him to do. 100 times 101 divided by 2 is 10,100 divided by 2, which equals 5,050. And when he brought this solution to the teacher, the teacher basically just said something along the lines of, thank you, 
we are finding a new school for you because you are definitely beyond <laughs> the scope of what we can teach you here. So it's a fascinating story about the history of math and how this partial sums of arithmetic uh, sequences came about. And it's really cool when you look at um, just a little bit of history about math. And like I said, everybody regards uh, Gauss as the father of mathematics, the one that really brought this idea of series and sequences and stuff like that to light. Now what we can do here is we can use this formula, which is going to be the sum of the partial sums is equal to n times n plus 1 over 2 So let me be more specific here. This is the sum of partial sums of an arithmetic sequence. We can use this to our advantage to find the sum of any arithmetic sequence. It's just we got to be clever about how we do this. So let me go ahead and just write down an example here for us. So we want to find the partial sum of the following arithmetic sequence. Now if you notice, this sequence is different from the one that we looked at previously. The one that we looked at previously with the history of Gauss, the numbers were 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so forth. They were in order. However, this one is not in order. Notice you have 3, 7, 11, 15. In other words, we're skipping some. So the first thing that we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to find that common difference. So find D. Okay. Now for us, it's going to be very simple. So I'm just going to go ahead and write this out. And I'm just going to look at the first two terms and say, okay, well, 7 minus 3 is 4. Next two terms, 11 minus 7, well, that's 4 again. 15 minus 11, well, that's 4 again. So I'm pretty confident that my common difference is 4. Sorry, I don't know why I wrote 5 there. Now, we also know that our very first term is equal to 3. Therefore, oops, sorry, I was using... Here, you know what, I'll show you this, since we're getting into more advanced mathematics. This little uh, three dot thing is called therefore. So therefore, our arithmetic sequence that we have here is going to be equal to three plus four times n minus one. And we're going to use this to our advantage. The problem is, if you look at our sequence from above, so let me scroll down a little bit. And I'm going to put a box around it. What we don't know is how many terms we actually have. Because remember, if I scroll back a little bit more, if I scroll back a little bit more, <clears throat> this formula gives us the sum of partial sums of our arithmetic sequence. Okay? And the thing is, that letter N tells me how many terms we have. All right? That tells me how many terms. So, since we have 3, 7, 11, 15, in other words, we know we're missing numbers, we need to figure out how many terms are in this sequence. So, that's our next move. So, our next move, second, is how many terms do we have? And it's actually not as hard as what you think, all right? What we know is the end of this stops at 159 and that is going to have to equal 3 plus 4 times the quantity n minus 1. In other words, it equals our sequence. So if we just go ahead and we solve this accordingly, we're going to subtract 3. 159 minus 3 is going to be 156 equals 4 times n minus 1. Then we divide both sides by 4. So 156 divided by 4 is going to be 39 equals n minus 1. We add 1 to both sides. We find that we have exactly 40 terms. Okay, so we know we have 40 terms. Okay, so to help us with this, all right, our book kind of gives us uh, a couple nice formulas. So let me go ahead and let me show you what those formulas look like. And here's what the formulas look like. So for an arithmetic sequence given by 
our formula right there, the nth partial sum is given by either of the two formulas. It doesn't matter which one you use. You can use either or, all right? So S sub n, and we're going to use, uh, use the second one here. So n times a plus a n over 2. So we know we have 40 terms. Our first term was the number 3. Our last term is 159. And then we could just go ahead and divide this by 2. And if you just go ahead and use a calculator, you're going to find that the answer is 3,240. So 3 plus 7 plus 11 all the way up to 159 equals 3,240. And that is basically it for this uh, for this video. So in the next one, we're going to learn about a geometric ser series or geometric sequence. And um, that is just multiplying the same common ratio. But more on that in the next video. See ya.